everyone, this is Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. Today we're taking a look at iOS 7. iOS 7 is a new piece of software for the iPhone and iPad. It comes out this fall and it is a free update. Let's take a look at the possible iOS 7 release date and a collection of iOS 7 features. There is no iOS 7 release date just yet, but the good money is on the week of September 15th with a very good bet for September 18th two days ahead of a suspected iPhone 5S release date. iOS 7 comes with a collection of new features, including a new quick access to Spotlight with a pull down from anywhere on the iOS screen. There's a whole new look throughout. You'll see here with the dialer pad, if you touch whatever colors are on the home screen behind it, you will see it comes through there. There's parallax, so if you tilt the phone back and forth, you see different parts of the screen move and shift around. This is Apple's new direction for iOS 7, and we're starting to see this creep into other specific apps. Apple is providing a facelift to a number of apps, including Messages, which looks a little cleaner now, and you can now swipe between conversations and the main screen. Messages also receives a facelift. Now you'll see colored icons throughout and a few new settings and different ways to move around with gestures as well. When you receive a phone call, you also get a new look with some new buttons in there, a much bigger background image options to decline calls. And when you get a call, you slide in and as you slide, you'll see the screen kind of changes and it's part of that overall iOS 7 flow that we're seeing. There's also a new in-call screen where you can change some different options and jump into a FaceTime call, etc. Control Center is a brand new addition for iOS 7. A swipe up from inside any app or in the lock screen provides access to common settings such as Wi-Fi, airplane mode, Bluetooth, do not disturb, and orientation lock. You can control brightness, you can control media playback, volume, airdrop, your Bluetooth and AirPlay settings, you can turn on a flashlight, you can have quick access to a number of apps including calculator and camera. Notification Center isn't brand new but it gets a nice facelift. When you pull down you have a today section where you can see reminders, events that are for today, weather, stock information, and you can complete your uh, calendar and reminder items. There's also an all setting where you see all these notifications and a mist that kind of summarizes the few things that you have missed while you have been out of the notification center. Multitasking gets a big facelift in iOS 7. You can now multitask in landscape mode and everything shows up in landscape. In both landscape and portrait, you can scroll through and these big cards show you what the apps are so there's no more hunting and pecking at icons. Now, with this, you can also close apps. Instead of holding and then tapping an X, you just swipe up and the app is closed. It's not deleted or anything like that. It's just no longer running. iTunes Radio may be one of the biggest hyped features for iOS 7. It's basically Apple's version of Pandora, but it's built right into the music app. You can control it with Siri that includes creating a new station, playing a station that you've already created. You can star a song. You can like it. You can go to iTunes and purchase it. There's a lot of things you can do here in iTunes Radio iTunes Radio will also show you history so you can see all the songs you've listened to and dive back in and buy that one song you really like. There are ads in the free version. There are no ads in the paid version, which is part of iTunes Match. Users that keep tons of photos on their iPhone will love the new Photos app. You get this new Years view, which shows you all of your photos, and then you can dive into collections, which are organized by date, time, and location. So here we can pop in and see where we were taking photos in San Francisco and Sonoma and Napa and dive in to see those photos up close. When you also hop back out and as part of this, as you're moving around, you can actually share a collection of photos so that you don't have to go through and select each one individually. This is built in to the collections part of the new Photos app. Another really nice feature is the addition to photo streams. So with iOS 7, in addition to sharing photos, you can share videos so that you don't have to pick and choose what you're sharing or how you're sharing media. You can do that all within PhotoStream and iCloud. AirDrop is a really cool feature where you can 
instantly share via Wi-Fi photos and other files to other iOS 7 devices. As long as you're within range, you don't have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network. They just connect wirelessly and transfer your photos. With iOS 7, Apple doesn't go a full-on Samsung route and throw in a bunch of modes, but what we do see is a revamped camera app that lets you switch between modes by swiping across the screen those gestures again. And we have a new mode, which is square. It's in there for those people who really like Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, we have filters. And so you can see a live preview of the filter, what it looks like, and you can see several of them on screen at once. And it changes what the photos and videos look like. Safari also gets a facelift. We have a single URL bar up at the top that disappears as you start scrolling. Same goes for the bottom bar, so you get much more screen real estate. Now when you need it, they show up. You have access to more tabs. You're not limited to those few tabs. Just tons of tabs here. Maybe a little too much for some users. And you can go into your bookmarks. You can see a reading list that's curated from Twitter as long as you've linked your Twitter account. Gesture controls also show up in Safari, so you can switch between going back and forward a page. You don't need the arrows, you just swipe from the edges of the screen. The new single URL bar up at the top will start preloading the top hit so that your web pages actually load faster. So Siri is improved in iOS 7. We get new voice options. If you head into settings, you can choose a gender. You used to have to switch a language for this to work, but now you can choose between a male and a female voice. And the voices are improved. We can toggle voice feedback to let us know if we always want stuff read back to us or if we only want that when we have headphones or Bluetooth plugged in. To launch Siri, it's the same hold. What movies are playing nearby? Here's the Mortal Instruments. City of Bones playing today quite far from Finley. So you can check movies and things that we've seen in other versions of iOS. And here's a few other different things. You can say, give me directions home. There are a lot of different items you can do, especially if you haven't updated in a while. So as we scroll through here, you can set alarm clocks, reminders, check movies, do restaurant reservations. Who's playing Major League Baseball tonight? Check things like that, and in general, Siri's voice is more improved, sounds a little more natural, and Siri seems a little more reliable in iOS 7. For more on iOS 7, head over to gotobemobile.com, where we'll have tips, tricks, and everything you need to know about iOS 7 this fall.